Today's essay we'll be focusing on is explain issues of reliability and validity associated with the classification and diagnosis of schizophrenia. So let's get straight into this. So the first point is schizophrenia is diagnosed using the DSM in Europe. Um, this is continuously updated and aims to provide a reliable method to diagnose and classify schizophrenia. Um, if you write schizophrenia out fully once, you can then abbreviate it to SZ. You would then go on to defining reliability, which is the extent to which different psychiatrists can agree on diagnosis when assessing the same patients. And I have this funny picture over here. Um, which says, this psychiatrist says, nope, not schizophrenic. This one says, hmm, yes, definitely schizophrenic. So it shows that reliability between psychiatrists is low. So the first study into reliability I talk about is Klosterkotter's German psychiatric study. So Klosterkotter um, assessed over 400 admissions to a German psychiatric unit to determine which symptoms positive or negative are more useful to determine a diagnosis of schizophrenia. So the positive symptoms from the clinical characteristics of schizophrenia are delusions of grandeur, experiences of control, hallucinations um, and disordered thinking, whereas negative symptoms are affective flattening, allogia and avolition. Klosterkotter found that positive symptoms such as delusions and hallucinations seem to be more useful than negative symptoms. However, as we know, for a valid classification to get the AO2 marks, I would then say, therefore it is too complex to diffuse to just one diagnostic category and all symptoms should be considered. Otherwise, it is likely that diagnosis lacks reliability. Um, as it is harder to distinguish between schizophrenic and non-schizophrenic patients. The study could also be further criticised as Klosterkotter's German study is not universal, weakening the research. Klosterkotter's findings that positive symptoms are more effective or useful in diagnosis may only reflect German culture. Therefore, we cannot assume that all countries will have the same findings. For example, negative symptoms may be more useful in another country. Perhaps diagnosis may lack reliability as it is not the same in all countries. Even between countries within Europe, there seems to be differences in diagnosis. This questions the culture bias when assessing as it seems to be um, a subjective even when following the DSM guidelines, which weakens the DSM and the research as unreliable. And that is shown with this picture, again, where both of them have differing opinions on whether this man is schizophrenic or not. The next AO2 point would be, further research has been focused on the reliability of diagnosis when just one key characteristic um, symptom is required, which is bizarre delusions. And a picture here of Homer having bizarre delusions um, as the voice in his head is saying, kill him, die. So I would then go on to saying, however, it was found that even when just one symptom was used, interrelator reliability, which is the reliability between psychiatrists, so this one again would have low reliability as their, their judgment of whether this man is schizophrenic differs from each other. So yeah, the um, interrelator reliability between 50 US, 50 U.S. senior um, psychiatrists um, was as low as just 0 0.40. So this suggests that even when schizophrenia is reduced to just one key diagnostic system symptom, agreement between psychiatrists is likely to be inconsistent, weakening the reliability of diagnosis. This is likely, again, to be due to the subjective nature of bizarre delusions. Even this one symptom is open to individual interpretation and threatens the reliability of diagnosis. So our next study that shows low reliability is the famous Rosenhans being sane in insane places study. Um, a notorious study which highlighted the low reliability of classifying and diagnosing schizophrenia, um, which was conducted by Rosenhans. 
His study was called Being Sane in Insane Places. In this US study, normal people presented themselves as patients to psychiatric hospitals, stating they were experiencing auditory... Sorry if I draw it here quickly. (laughs) Auditory... um, Hallucinations. That is the worst picture. I I actually have one, which is a lot better. Um, Right here. Um, and these voices were saying thud or echo, which are actually not a guideline of auditory hallucinations. All the normal confederates were diagnosed with schizophrenia and admitted into hospitals. Once admitted um, into the hospitals, they returned their behaviour to normal, although no staff detected their normality. Instead, it was found that even their normal behaviour was viewed as to be symptoms of the disorder. This highlights the potential negative impact of labelling and diagnosing schizophrenia, weakening the reliability of the psychologist's diagnosis. Furthermore, in a follow-up study, Rosenhan warned hospitals that he would be sending more pseudo-patients when in fact he sent none. Um, However, due to these warnings, hospitals sent away 21% of real patients as they suspected they too were fake patients. This highlights the inefficiency and low reliability in diagnosis, suggesting it is really difficult in some cases to distinguish between schizophrenic and non-schizophrenic patients. Although Rosenthal's study sheds light on some serious flaws with psychiatric hospitals diagnosing schizophrenia, uh, some have argued that it was really unethical. As Rosenhan deceived the hospitals, a lot of patients who needed to be admitted were sent away, potentially worsening their schizophrenia, and the study can be deemed as unethical. Um, now we're going to move on to validity. So just as reliability of diagnosing schizophrenia is low, it also seems diagnosing the disorder is often done with little validity. A valid diagnosis would imply the symptoms the patient shows are definitely symptoms of schizophrenia. However, research implies the symptoms are often mirrored in other mental illnesses, questioning the meaning of diagnosis. So Schneider listed psychotic symptoms he believed were unique to schizophrenia alone. He referred to these as first-ranked symptoms, which include delusions and auditory hallucinations. However, even these are seen in bipolar and depression, um, weakening the validity of diagnosis. Similarly, Ellison and Ross point out that people with dissociative identity disorder actually have um, more schizophrenic symptoms than people diagnosed as being schizophrenic. This suggests that schizophrenic symptoms have low validity, as someone with did, so you can also shorten this to did, um, can be diagnosed with schizophrenia. Therefore, diagnosis seems to lack in validity. So next, we move on to prognosis. So it is expected that psychologists would be able to predict the illness prognosis for the patient with confidence and validity. So prognosis is a medical term to predict the likely. Um, likely outcome um, of someone someone standing with schizophrenia in this case however as prognosis is so varied there's so many outcomes and um, some patients do never um, do not ever recover some do some live with it um, and sadly some turn, turn to suicide um, and others just constantly relapse Therefore, a diagnosis of the disorder has little predictive validity as many individual differences in influence the outcome of schizophrenia, such as how long it has gone untreated um, because it is a degenerative disorder. Um, that is to say, it gets worse the older you get. Um, or even gender, a major issue of val- uh, validity associated with prognosis classification is... Um, that there's so many different individual differences that are not considered when diagnosing schizophrenia. And in this case, the prognosis. Therefore, prognosis seems weak um, as doctors are unable to take into consideration all factors. Therefore, prognosis seems weak and lacking in validity um, due to prognosis being so varied. Finally, um, Cochrane's study shows that Um, 
No, the number of schizophrenics in the black Caribbean community living in the UK is substantially higher than the white British population. This may indicate the low validity of diagnosis due to ethnocentric bias um, imposed by white English psycholo psychologists, psychiatrists, um, as they misconstrue culturally formed behaviours um, as, a, as a symptom of schizophrenia. Um, therefore, it seems that diagnosis in, is culturally biased and therefore lacks in validity. To conclude, perhaps um, for schizophrenia diagnosis to be reliable and valid, more intensive research must be conducted on patients. Um, it is clear that psychiatrists need to assess a patient in depth, taking all factors into consideration before diagnosing, for diagnosis to be more valid and reliable. But thank you for watching um, and good luck with your exams, especially the PSYA4 exam. Thank you. Bye.